So in this video, um, I know that we kind of already finished unit six and I said we finished unit six and I made another video and now here's another video on unit six. It's just because unit six is like so cool that I can't, I can't help myself, right? Like there's just so much you can do with just the knowledge of unit six. Um, so what I did, inspired from my, uh, you know, misspent class periods in high school, if you've seen the slime volleyball games or the slime soccer, slime basketball, you can look them up. I think they were in Flash before and you can find websites that uh, recreate them or emulate them. And I was just like, hey, we, we have the material just at Unit 6, just halfway through this course to make that, like, make that program. Um, so what I'll do now, one thing you'll notice, this is a very large program. It is uh, 194 lines of code. A lot of it is unnecessary. A bunch of it is spacing. Um, and because we're stuck on using, I'm, I'm making this purposefully as a unit six video, because we're stuck on it as a unit six video, it's made in a kind of gross way um, just to make sure that we can make it with only stuff that we know from unit six. As you learn more and more, eventually we'll get to a point where we can do these things a bit more elegantly using less lines of code um, and making the program like a little easier to read, if not as easy to understand, if that makes sense. Um, but anyways, this is a unit six video. So I want to show it using like making this using only unit six stuff. Um, I'm sure as we go through the video, I'm going to find ways that like, I'm like, why did I program it this way? That's just how programming works, right? When you're working on it, you're banging your head against the keyboard and getting stuff done. Um, you often will do things that can like work, um, or maybe you'll find a problem that you can't solve. And one of the best things about programming is the problem solving that comes out of like, you kind of realizing how your brain works. Cause you'll be working on a problem, can't figure it out, can't figure it out. And then you step away from the computer for an hour or two. And then you come back and you're like, wow, how was I not understanding this? And you just get it done. Or sometimes kind of my favorite thing is, you know, you're like, about to go to bed or you're brushing your teeth or you're just having dinner and like having a conversation with someone. And then you just, the idea, you weren't actively thinking about it, but just something, the gears were still going in the back of your head and you're like, oh, whoa, I know how to solve this. And you have to run over your computer no matter where you're at at the moment to get that solution down on, or, you know, at least write the solution on paper or get it down in code uh, before it kind of escapes you. Um, anyways, long thing for what's like long introduction for what's already going to be a long video. Let's get into it. Uh, what we've got right here, let me show you how the program runs. We'll talk about it a little bit as I'm running it. And then I'll try to hit the broad strokes of the code here. Obviously it's like almost 200 lines of code. We're not going to get into every single little detail of everything. Um, but hopefully it's enough to see how the step function works using like actually using the jump for a more complete product here than in our previous videos for the end of unit six. Um, and just kind of seeing how these things all go together and what we can do with the knowledge that we have. So I'll run the program. Um, we have a ball that kind of will bounce around right now and it's using on step and it's just bouncing. I also have these players that I can move and I can even have them jump uh, by using WASD for this blue guy and the arrow keys for this red guy. Um, and the idea is, you know, it's a two player game. So one person will sit on the left side of the keyboard, WASD, the other person will sit on the right side of the keyboard, arrow keys, and you can play volleyball. Uh, you can see right up over here, because I've just been letting it go, uh, the score just keeps going up every time it hits the ground, the, the counter goes up by one. Um, but, you know, we can actually play volleyball where I'll hit the ball now and I'll try to make it hit the right side and I just got a point. And now I got them going on a cycle unless they react. Um, obviously I could make this where it like resets after every point and, you know, have it be more of like a real game that way. But, you know, this is just a proof of concept, right? That we can do something like this with our unit six, um, knowledge. So I think you get what's going on in this program, right? Like you see what's going on. It's a real game. Like it looks like a real thing. Like we made a game here, which is super cool with scoring on the top and the player moving around kind of realistic ish feeling physics with the ball, how it reacts and bumps around. Um, it's just super cool. I don't know if you're still here with me, you made it through my intro and you're excited enough about this to be like, yes, this is cool. Can you finally tell me how it's working? So let's do that. I'm going to pause it. We're going to zoom in and try to look at this methodically, but not 
under a microscope because I do want this video, it's probably already approaching five minutes. I do want this video to be less than 20 minutes long. So let's try to go through it so you can understand it. Um, yeah, uh, let me stop talking. Let's just start doing. So let me zoom in over here. Um, again, this is using stuff only that we know up through unit six. So this is why part of this looks kind of clunky and gross. Because we don't know about dynamically making things and creating our own objects and classes, which I don't even know if that's in the scope of this course, um, making your own classes, your own custom classes. I don't think it is. So what we just did was like, all right, I made a global variable. Sue me, what are you gonna do? Sorry. I made a global variable, made it an arc. That's my player one, this is blue. I made a whole bunch of custom properties for that global player one variable. It has an X and a Y velocity, which is gonna be used for moving it around and for jumping. Um, and then it also has kind of these things. All, oh, all right, so for is jumping, that's the check we saw in the jumping video before. It's to change the state so that I'm jumping and then I'm falling and doing all that good stuff. We already saw a video, we have a whole video on that. So I'm gonna kind of not explain the jumping too much in this video. Over here, we're now creating a state, just like we had a state for jumping that will make it jump and then it'll fall because it's jumping and when it hits the ground now it's, it's no longer jumping, you can jump again. We're creating a state for the ball having just hit the player and that is really just useful. I, I, I kind of discovered that I needed that through bugs while I was making this program. Um, I couldn't live stream making this program, or I could, but it wouldn't be a YouTube video. It would really be more of a live stream because it took a bit of time for me to figure all this out and and do it. So, you know, I'm happy to always show my, my process, though it is also, like I was describing earlier in the video, kind of hard sometimes to come up with solutions in the moment. You'll even see me in some of my videos where I make a mistake and I'll, I'll like watch it back and be like, wow, how did I not figure out what's going on there? Anyways, let's focus. This just hit variable is checking to see if the ball just hit me, because uh, I only really want to when, when the slime gets hit by the ball or the net gets hit by the ball, I want it to hit once, react by ch upgrading the updating the ball's velocity and moving it. Um, if I don't have this just hit variable here, it'll it could potentially activate getting hit by the player multiple times and it'll jiggle a bit, or maybe the velocity gets like changed too much and it goes flying off screen. So this is used to deal with that issue. And these two variables as well, I think done kind of unelegantly now that I'm thinking of it, uh, to, to make sure that like, hey, I was just hit, let's wait a little while before I uh, allow myself to get hit again. Um, let's see. Also over here, this is the label for the player one score. Whenever it hits the player two's side of the field, player one score goes up. Um, and now over here, again, because we're using only unit six knowledge, there's kind of some grossness here. Everything I did with player one, I have to do again with player two all over again because I don't have access to classes and stuff like that at this point in the curriculum. Uh, so I just make a whole new player two variable, global variable, all these custom properties, blah, 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 same exact stuff. The ball is like a play, either of the players, but all it has is just an X and Y velocity. And the net is like the players, but it can't move but it can get hit by the ball and the ball should bounce off of it. So it has that just hit check. Um, 60 FPS, baby. I think now the standard is kind of higher, like 120 or something, but 60 FPS still has the memes. So that's what we're playing at. Uh, and then let's go in over here. I'll try to breeze through this quickly because we know how to move the player already, right? On key holds, if I'm pressing the A or the D key, the player is moving either I'm setting their velocity to a negative three, so it's moving left, or a positive three, so it's moving to the right. The only new thing over here is I just put boundaries on this. So I'm checking if I'm pressing the A key and I'm also only gonna set that velocity as long as I'm pressing the A key and I'm not off the left side of the screen. So the player's left, P1.left, as long as it's greater than zero, I'll allow my player to move left. Similarly over here, as long as their right side is less than 200, it's not hitting the net in the middle, I'll allow myself to move right. This prevents me from running under the net and like messing around with the player on their side. Uh, and then otherwise, I'm setting it to zero. So like, hey, you can't move anymore. You're, you're done, right? If you're not fitting any of these, you're not moving left or right anymore. Same exact thing for player two. There's going to be a lot of that here. All right. Now we're into the on step function. Um, here, I'm counting the steps. Just every single time I go through a step, each player and the net are all counting how many steps they're at. Just to be used for, I'm pretty sure, just checking like if I should hit again. Uh, and then of course... 
I'm updating the ball based off of its x and y velocities, right? So it's center x or center y. I'm going to plus equals its velocity in the y and velocity in the x. I can always just use plus equals because if the velocity happens to be negative, well, if you add a negative, it'll go negative. So this will always update the, the ball to move in the direction that it should be moving based on its x and y velocities. Um, I think I already have videos talking about velocities. It's been a while. I've done unit seven videos and now I'm back on unit six. But uh, if not, that's how it works. The players, they're both also going to be updating always to move based on their x, current x and y velocity. And then here, the ball is always going to be experiencing gravity. So I'm always, every single step, increasing because velocity, right, as y goes, gets increasing, you're going down, right, starting at zero down to 400. If you don't already have that in your head at this point in the unit, like, I don't in, in the curriculum, I don't know. Like, come on now. Um, though I always mess it up. Just fix your negatives, right? It's no big deal. Sorry, I don't mean to shame anybody. Um, what are we doing here? So we're always adding 0.25 to the ball's velocity. You can obviously play around with this to make it feel however you want the ball to feel. But this is going to make it so the ball is always either... It's always accelerating down, right? This is making it so that the velocity... I'm changing the velocity by positive 0.25 every single frame so it will always have a force acting downwards on it now if the current velocity is super negative negative 10 like it just got hit well it's gonna be moving upwards but always the acceleration is starting to make it move upwards slower and slower and slower and slower which is why we get that nice kind of like physics simulation feeling out of it um i also here if the player is jumping, I'm setting gravity for them, right? If I should, if I am currently jumping and I need to start moving down, here's where I'm setting the gravity. You can notice the players move down faster than the ball. Um, I also, here's a fix from that jumping video from before. This is a fix to say, hey, if my bottom is ever greater than 400, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stop its Y velocity, but I'm also gonna set its bottom to exactly 400. So even this gets rid of my issue from those previous videos of jumping where my ball kind of goes halfway through the ground. Well, if I notice that I'm below the ground, boop, I'm just going to bring my guy back up to the, to the bottom, you know, their bottom to be back up to the ground. Same exact thing happens with player two. Um, and then let's see what happens over here. Bounce and contain the ball on the canvas. All right. So here's the stuff that's going to make the ball move around over here. If the ball's bottom is greater than 400, meaning it went below the bottom of the screen, I'm going to set its bottom equal to 400, and I'm going to reverse, right? I'm going to set its y velocity equal to the negative of its old velocity. And again, the way negative signs work, this will always do what you want. Ooh, that's gross. This will do what you always want it to do is um, if it was moving down, well, it bounces off the ground. Now it's going to be moving up because if it was moving down, it had a positive velocity in the y going from zero to 400 and now i'm going to set it equal to a negative velocity in the y and i also decided to multiply it by 0 0.9 to not make it just bounce exactly the same amount but after it bounces it kind of loses a little bit of speed it won't bounce as high as it was before um let's see i also say all right if the center of the ball is oh when it hits the bottom, if its center is less than 200, here's where I update the scores. The p2.score value plus equals one. If it was greater than 200, the ball center x, when I hit the ground, right, ball bottom is greater than 400, I know I'm hitting the ground. Here's where I increase the score for either of the players. I also check if the ball's left is less than zero. Um, I, just like I made sure I don't get stuck in the ground, I set its left equal to zero. And then I reverse its X velocity over here to make it, it's going off, you know, the screen and it'll, you know, it's going uh, this way. It'll keep going, right? It was going up. The Y is not changing, but the X will reverse and it starts going off that way. Same thing happens when it goes off the right side of the screen. That's how I have it bouncing off the side of the screen. And just as a little example of that, you can see, boom, it happened right there. It happened right there. As soon as it bounces off that left wall, that's where it's happening. Um, all right, let's come back over here. Whoops. Sorry, the zoom wasn't working for a second. Um, this is where, oh my gosh, why is my, there it is. Okay, let's scroll back down over here. We got it bouncing off the ground, bouncing off the walls, balls looking happy. Here now, this was the hardest part of the program, and you could definitely play around with this a bunch. 
uh, here's where we have it bounce off of the player. I do a bunch of calculations. I'm pretty sure um, now that I'm moving on to making unit eight videos, I'm pretty sure some of the math functions could have been helpful over here. So I'm not gonna bother explaining the math that I did. I did some like custom built in like calculations of vectors, making it into a unit vector based on where it hit and where the center of the art, where the center of the player was, the center of the ball. Suffice to say, I set, um, you know, I set the ball's X velocity and Y velocity to some weird stuff. I'll slowly scroll over it. So if you want to try to understand the math there on your own, or even just to copy it so you can play around with this and, and make your own slime volleyball or slime soccer or basketball game, I'll keep this scrolling back and forth a little bit. Maybe I'll even zoom out a little bit so it can fit. Oh my gosh. Zoom out. Zoom out a little more. There we go. Um, just so you can kind of see it all in once instead of me having to scroll back and forth. Sorry, my computer's chugging a little bit. Um, so yeah, you know, there's the calculation. Sorry, I'm not gonna explain it. You can see I took some time. I had to do some like debug code over here, put a print in, see what it was setting it to. That's how it bounces off the player. Yay, it did that. Um, okay, I also do have a thing where, all right, I'm checking to see, um, once I hit the ball, I set my just hit to true to make sure that, I mean, look, right, look, I'm checking if the ball that hits the shape player one and I was not just hit, then I'm gonna bounce off. And once I do get hit, right, the just hit was false to be able to enter here, I set it to true, so I can't go back into this if immediately on the next step. I gotta wait a little while. Um, let's see. And then I set the hit time equal to the player one dot steps, so it's set to how many steps we've gone through so far at the time at the moment. And then over here, this is to check if we were just hit, check to see if it's been enough time to allow another hit. Here's where I check, all right, if I was just hit, I'm gonna check the steps minus the hit time, and if that difference was 10, um, I'll set just hit to false. I think I could have done this with one less variable just by resetting hit time to zero and then adding, but whatever. Uh, I did it stupidly, I'm not gonna fix it right here in the middle of this video. Let's keep going, I wanna get this done soon. The ball, right, the, it bounces off the player two, that's what that does. Here I have it bouncing off the net, Maybe this is a little easier to explain because I just say, hey, if I ever hit the net, I'm making it nice and easy. I'm making it nice and easy, where it's just like, hey, look, and here maybe is a better way to explain how I make it bounce off of the, the net instead of the players. Um, bounce off the net. If the ball hits the net, right, hits shape net, and the net was not just hit, well, here's what we're gonna do. If I was on the left side of the net, if my center X was less than 200, I'm gonna, whatever its velocity was before, set its new velocity to negative six. So now it's moving to the left in the X direction. And I'm gonna set its Y velocity, no matter if it was moving up when it hit the net or down when it hit the net, I'm setting the new Y velocity to negative six. That'll make it go up and to the left. If I hit the net and I was on the right side of the net, well, I'm gonna start moving it to the right. It's gonna bounce off the net and go rightwards um, and still go upwards. Uh, if it's directly in the middle, so if it's like literally, right, if it's not less than 200 or greater than 200, I want it to do something. Uh, if it's exactly 200, I'll just, oh crap. This is using stuff from unit eight. Random is a math function. Well, here you go. I choose a random number between zero and one. If it was less than 0.5, um, it'll act as if it was on the left side of the net. Otherwise, it'll act as if it was on the right side of the net. And I do the same thing, the counter that I explained before where I set just hit to true, and I set my hit time to the current steps, and then over here is just always gonna be checking, hey, if I was just hit, I'm gonna check if it's been enough time, if the steps minus hit time is greater than 10, if it's been 10 frames since I was just hit, and I'd set hit time to steps, then I'll set it back to false, I was not just hit again, I'm ready to get hit again. Um, on key press, same like our jumping program from before, if I press W, and the player wasn't already jumping, I'll set jumping to true, and I'll boop, give him a, a quick boost upwards. Um, same thing, if I press up, I'll make the, the other player jump. Um, on key release, I will, if the key was, oh, this is how I fix it from the jumping one that I was having issues the first five minutes of that video. If the key that I released 
was A or D, the player uh, one you know, stops moving. Same thing with player two. Uh, I did a calculate midpoint function here, but I don't think I use it anywhere, right? Let me just check calculate mid. Oh, maybe I do use it. Oh yeah, I use it for calculating the impact point. All right, I don't remember what I did that for. I, I, I uh, went over, you know, kind of skimped past that, that math over there. Anyways, so all that to say, you know, maybe you wouldn't have your ball bounce off of the player uh, using the math that I have here, which is kind of crazy, but you could just set it equal to some random number, right? Maybe the left player, you always just want it to move to the right, just kind of like I have it bouncing off of the net. So even minus all that crazy math, um, and the random was really me being a little extra for, for it, right? Like I could just wait another frame and then it'll be a little bit above or a little bit below 200. Um, but anyways, there we've got our program where it, uh, does it ever bounce left? Oh, it's, so the random does help where it's like it'll randomly bounce to one player's side uh, every now and again differently. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you were watching this, that means you, you know, are really excited about this stuff, which is awesome. And, uh... I really like, if you do make something like this, share, like, you know, share it with me somehow. Put it in the comments or something. I'd love to see the different uh, things that you do. Have it reset, have like an actual end to the game, an end state. Um, you can make all sorts of cool stuff. And this is just with unit six, just halfway through the curriculum here. Um, anyways, this video is way too long. Thank you for sticking with me. I hope you enjoyed it and got something out of that. And I'll see you next time.